Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to show you how I created this little chunky mini album. It is a six by six, so it would work good for six by six paper. I happened to use a 12 by 12 set and I'll talk a little bit about that um, in a minute. I am going to um, do a flip through of this album and I have a little, couple little bits of information that I'm going to talk about that might take a couple minutes. So if you are wanting just to see the demo of how to put this book together, it is a really simple album. It's uh, made out of chipboard. I used 110 pound here. For our demo, I'm going to use 80 pound. Um, and uh, I will go ahead and put some chapters or timestamps in the description box. That way you can go to it and click on that if you just want to start from where I start the demo. So I created this album um, and used, I had one specific designer series paper set that I wanted to use. You may be able to tell. Um, if you're familiar with Echo Park, that this is the Spring Market uh, collection, and I think this is the the set that started started it all for the market um, the market lights. But anyway, so I happened to use the re-release of the Spring Market um, Echo Park set. The re-releases have. Um, half, like half of the images or maybe like two thirds of the images. Um, and, but you get, no, that's not right. That's not how math works, but you get the same number of pages, but for some of them you get two of the same. So you get a, a back and front and you have two, two pieces that are the same. At any rate, um, that's what I used for this particular album. And um, I like the, uh, for as a maker who sometimes wants to, after I have the design of an album completed, uh, if I have a lot of paper that is the same, it takes me less time to cover the book and to do the little decorations because the more I'm limited, the more I, um, the faster it is for me to decide, oh, I'm just gonna cut this up in this size and, and see what happens. Um, so, so that's what I used for this album. And this is all that I have left. I have about a half a sheet of one piece. And then I have about a quarter of another piece. And I don't think I even have any cut aparts left, but we'll see um, as we go through. So let me move this aside. And I did also want to really quickly talk about um, my schedule for lives. I haven't been doing lives in a few weeks and it really has kind of opened me up to not only do more crafting, but also to focus on my work work a little better. So, um, what I've decided is that I might do some impromptu lives over the next, uh, you know, few weeks, especially leading up to Christmas because who doesn't love to craft at Christmas time? But, um, I'm not going to do regularly scheduled lives until I get up to 1,000 subscribers. I totally appreciate all of the uh, individuals who come and visit me during my lives and support me and watch my projects even when they're messy or silly or don't turn out quite right. Um, I really appreciate all of the support and just the camaraderie. But it is a lot, I, my understanding is it's going to be a lot easier for me to set up a live and have my actual I go live and it connects to that existing, um, existing like thumbnail and information and link that's on YouTube already once I get to a thousand because I won't have to use a third party app. So that's the long and short about that. Um, again, I hope to see you guys soon and I'll do probably a few impromptus, but my Monday lives are no longer Monday lives. And so let me get a, go ahead and uh, 
flip through the album, I think I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so here's our book. I'm calling this the, the Happy uh, Smiles album because it says happy in the front. And then it says smiles on the side. And um, I'm calling this my portly 6x6 six six mini album. So it is 6x6. Six six. It uses the uh, that accordion binding system. But uh, I'll show you kind of how I did it for this particular album. I didn't have to do a separate accordion because the accordion is just attached to the, to the front and back cover. You can tell from the top, um, you know, how much, how thick it is already, but there are still like a couple of inches worth of space to grow here. And that's why I oftentimes do albums that have a quite a large gusset because I like to have room to grow. I like um, to be able to put thicker items on the pages, whether that's ephemera or this would be a good album if you like to use a lot of chipboard pieces or you have chipboard pieces as part of your collection um, because this has a half inch gusset and not only does it have a half inch gusset, but what that means is that you can put photos on each side and they're not going to stick together. Um, if you, if you do mini albums, if, uh, or, you know, if you put your photos in, in albums, um, a lot of times if you have two photos that kind of live kissing each other, they get sticky or over time that kind of breaks down a little bit. I imagine that if you're using, paper, like printer paper, probably doesn't happen, but if you're using glossy or even sometimes matte photos, depending on the processing, I think, that they can uh, kind of get that. Um, that's why the old school uh, photo albums had that plastic sheet, just to kind of keep the photos separate. So, um, I started uh, from the front, and here I have just a little fold open. This is a four, three by four. And so it has a place for photos here, here, and here. So that would be three photos. And this one I didn't magnet. I felt like just because of the weight or not the weight, just because of the design of how this folds up, um, it really is kind of holding itself closed. Um, if that bothers you, you could do Velcro or any kind of closure. You could use your magnets. Um, so that's that. I, I left uh, this one pretty wide open. Um, if someone had a, you know, a 5x5 five five or 6x6 six six photo for some reason, um, they could just uh, cover that sticker. And I have some sliding pockets. So... This is just one mat for photos. Here's another one where I just used some stickers to decorate it. Some stickers here. I figure you can put a small photo here. Um, I think this is a good area for a ticket stub if you have ticket stubs. Um, so, and I have a little wa waterfall here and really, um, these are three by three. Yeah, these are three by three. And I just put some stickers in some of it to decorate it. Here I used one of the pages that is more of a, of a white kind of background. And I made um, these two photo mats, kind of journaling cards. I figured you could write something in this area. And there's a lot of shiplap paper in here. So once I kind of figured out that that would be really good for journaling, um, I started using it for journaling spots. Uh, here I have a rosette that's also made out of the designer series paper. And I just have half of it glued down. So these two just kind of tuck back in there. Then I have a band. 
I like to put bands in some of my books. Um, sometimes I use a gusset. This one is folded under, but does not have like a, a real gusset. And um, I just have a few little uh, photo mats and journaling areas here. You can see that there are two different sizes of that. And actually, I didn't even notice. Oh, no, that just looks like a weathered paint uh, uh, image. I thought it was writing at first. but So photos and journaling here. And it just slips under this little band. Of course, some of these photos and uh, oh, photo mats and journaling spots, I added kind of last minute. A lot of times, if I have a uh, if I have a designer paper collection that I'm using, once I get down to maybe three sheets or you know three half sheets and a three quarter sheet, you know, when I get down to the end of it, um, I kind of make a decision of whether I'm going to be uh, using the rest of it in the make in the book or if I'm going to try to save it for another project. This um, kind of, it's kind of planning, it's last minute planning, but, but this helps me not have a ton of, of uh, paper collections where I only have like one sheet and the sticker sheet. If I know that I'm gonna go down to get, uh, you know, only have some, few page remnants, then I really want to uh, kind of think about it because it also uh, helps me plan new makes in the future and not have to um, worry about, hey, what am I going to make with these two pieces of papers and this full sticker sheet? So um, that's a little bit of, of what I've done. I, I did put this band down and I put one of these. I'm not sure which one it was. But then as I went through and was getting rid of more of the paper, I realized, oh, I can just put a couple more in here. And of course, you know, people can do whatever they want with these things. Um, it makes, you know, you can also just take a photo out and lean it against your, your desk, lean it against your microphone and, um, you know, and kind of have the photo out for a little while, but then it has a home to go to. So I think... So here is one of my favorite things to do right now, and it's just to kind of have a floating um, accordion or floating pocket. So this one um, has spots for one, two, really two photo spots, but then, you know, you can put photos on, on top of all of those if you want to. And this, again, is left blank. I feel like journaling could happen here naturally but then if you're not into journaling you just lay down a photo and you're good to go this one i left blank as well here i added a little um foldy that i closed with ribbon this is a foldy now that's the technical term just uses a couple of the cut aparts um one that has a spot for journaling and a spot for a photo and this can go either way. I'm trying to add some more ribbon into my um, into my mini albums when kind of the the style calls for it. I have not really been into ribbon that much, but I think that people really like the more interactive elements sometimes. So if you're into that, um, that's kind of why I've been adding that a little bit more uh, on the regular lately. I also have a side pocket here, and this one has a fold out, so you can put photos on all four of these. So you really can jam quite a few photos in here just to begin with, just with the spots that are available um, and the cards that are available. And this kind of sets out just a little bit. Um, these pages are inset just about half an inch or so. So even when you stand this book up, even when it is full, you won't see these that are sticking out of the pockets um, just because of how much 
wider the front and back cover are than the pages. Go back to there. Here's another one. It's a really beautiful uh, page, so I didn't want to cover it up. Um, but it is there for photos. I have another rosette. Um, this one has a landscape area that can be um, written written on. And again, I only put down half, glued down half of the rosette so that you could stick that down there. Also, a photo could be slipped underneath here um, and or glued down. And there's our last page. This one um, is kind of, it, it could be for journaling. The lines, of course, are uh, north and south. And then I just have a really standard pocket. I have three journaling cards here that have places on the back for photos. And there's another one that uses that particular paper. Um, for this one, I had this just this little chunk that uh, has the branding strip on it. But if you're not into designer paper and you don't know, um, you probably wouldn't even know that that's the branding strip. Um, also, I guess a lot of uh, paper pads now have just strips of different designs on, going across a 12 by 12 page. But anyway, that's that. And then I just went through, I uh, put some of the stickers around and I, uh, let's see here, what else about this? Put a rosette on the spine here. This rosette um, is, is pretty slim. It's a quarter of an inch, uh, quarter of an inch score lines. So that's how wide it is. And this book really kind of sits flat-ish uh, still. I mean, it, it's not stable, but it's still, you don't have to like hold it funny because the thing doesn't open, you know, you know what I mean, maybe. Maybe I'm not making any sense. But it sits flat-ish. Um, also, I didn't put any closure on the waterfall. I, now that I've added, I've started adding more ribbon to my to my mini albums and my folios, um, I might start using a uh, using some ribbon over the waterfalls. But generally, especially when I use this white because it's 110 pound, and then you have designer paper on both sides, they generally stay pretty uh, flat, as flat as they can, and and don't kind of pop up once they once you score them and burnish them and kind of lay them in the book with all of the book weight, they lay pretty flat. Um, and the other thing about this is that I wanted to mention the spine. The next time I make this album, when I cover it, I'm going to cover the spine with a piece of the same color cardstock, probably. Um, a plain cardstock so that it covers up these little these little lines which are the gussets right the pages um i just thought it would be a little more finished if i if i did it that way next time so so next time i'll probably do something where i i do um i do the measurement of the spine and i take off a quarter of an inch so it has an eighth of an inch on each side but then goes all the way to the top and bottom so it covers up those little gussets. Um, it's just something that I noticed that I could definitely, you know, uh, do differently next time, but I still like the way this turned out. Uh, it still looks good, and you generally don't spend a lot of time staring at the, at the spine of the book anyway. The other thing that I would have done differently, sorry, I'm just adjusting my chair here, is is I would have uh, done these pages a little differently, and we'll get into this when um, when we do our build here. But the pages, um, I folded the paper, and instead of mitering the little the little tab flaps that that you adhere the pages to, I I forgot to do that. And when I look at it, it is very obvious to me that I didn't do that. 
and and I don't like the look of it. But I feel like a recipient um, either you know is going to notice and doesn't care or isn't going to notice at all most likely so it's something that i will do differently as we build this this next book or this book now um so i am just going to create the base for you i'm going to create the base i will do a real time kind of timer and put that in the title um i do have my pages cut already though so maybe i'll add like two minutes but uh, but they're all the same size. So there wasn't a lot of different dimension on the base paper. And um, if you are interested in how I get the pockets or, uh, you know, the slide pockets or the waterfall or all of those sorts of things, um, definitely let me know in the description box because I can do a video specifically on those items. I am going to start a series where I I start a cover I'm sorry a um, where I do like a book build where it's the kind of the spine and the front and back cover and any kind of hinge with the pages but then do a series of shorter videos that show how to do a waterfall in this size album, whatever size it happens to be, how to do a sliding pocket, how to do a tag pocket, how to do a floating accordion, those sorts of things um, in separate smaller videos. I think that people like that. Those are more for inspiration and kind of uh, to see the mechanics. Uh, and so I think I'm gonna start doing that probably next month I will start a series like that. But if you just want to see how to create the skeleton of this album, we're going to do that now. So stay tuned. Okay, so I've got my scoreboard out. This um, can be done with any size scoreboard, I think, but easiest with a 12 by 12. Um, you can also do this without a scoreboard. All you have to do is, um, is draw a line at the score marks and fold on that line. Um, a lot of, I've shown before where I use sometimes a ruler to get a straight fold if you don't have a scoreboard or another tool to do that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this score tool today. And I'm gonna use my dollar store um, embossing tool. This has two different sizes on it and I like it a lot for scoring in this board. So uh, I don't, I, the one that I, that came with it is in a jar somewhere, but I use the Teflon one for, for burnishing, but then I use this one for scoring in this board. So this is called my Portly 6x6 mini album. And it starts out with eight pieces of cardstock. Sorry, the remnants are still tucked in here. And all eight of these pieces are six by 11. So this is basically eight pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'm gonna be using this blue, which is 80 pound. The one that I use in our completed album was 110 pound, um, which I love to use for mini albums. A lot of times, um, you know, you can't even tell that it's not chipboard just because between 110 pound stock and all of the layers, it, it comes really, it becomes really sturdy. But um, I'm just using this one because I have a lot of blue in my stash. So I will use this for the demonstration today. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, score the front and back cover. So these two pages are the same height and width, and we are going to score them also the same way. And we're just going to put it in our scoreboard with the 11 inch at the top. And we're going to start at the six inch mark. 
So easy way to think about it is this page is six by six. This front cover is six by six. So I'm just gonna start at six inches and score there. So now we have a six by six square, that's our front cover. And we're gonna score at every half inch all the way down. So six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten, and ten and a half. Oops. Well, that is not right at all. There we go. And this one is uh, the back cover, and we're going to score it the exact same way. We're going to start at six and score down every half inch. Now, if you've done So if you've done the accordion fold gusset binding before, you probably know where I'm going with this. But the next step is to burnish all of these score lines, fold and burnish. Now, when I do this kind of a um, kind of a binding, I just fold and burnish in any direction that feels right at the time, and then we will go back and refold our paper in whatever orientation it needs to fold in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish all of these lines and probably speed it up. Essentially, we have our front cover. This is a six by six square. We have a bunch of mountains and valleys, some more mountains and valleys, which we'll go through in a second, and then another six by six that's our back cover. So keep that in mind. Now, we have our book and or our cover. So when I open the book, this first half inch score between six and six inches is going to be flat. So imagine that is already part of the spine. You can see in our completed book exactly how that works. So I have my six inch square and my first half inch score between six and six and a half is flat, you know, flat. Um, so, if we know that this one is going to be flat, then we know that these next two are going to be a mountain. And that's our first hinge for our first page. So, I'm going to glue. Again, front page. This one is flat. So, I'm going to glue in between these two on the back. So this is the six and a half to seven and seven to seven and a half folds here. Then again, we want another flat piece. So these next two are gonna be a mountain. And you can kind of see how we build our book um, up that way. So, I'm gonna go ahead and glue these two together. So 
So now we have two hinges for pages. I'm gonna have another one that's flat. So these next two are another mountain. So now we have our front cover and three hinges for pages. And then this one is flat. This piece is going to look exactly like this piece once I fold it. And I'll do that along uh, with you here in a second. But then we're just gonna kind of flip it around this way. We'll have two flat pieces that we're just gonna glue together. And that is the spine. So I have, again, my back cover. And this one, this first one, is going to be flat and then the next two are going to be a mountain again I'm going to go in and glue them from the back oops um, this part you can do with uh, this part you can do with any kind of uh, dry adhesive as well I'm just using art glitter glue today I like to use glue, uh, wet glue for these just because I feel like it gives me a little more uh, time to wiggle, um, to reposition, especially at the point where I'm putting in elements in the book. There's our second page, and then we have one more page here. I did go pretty fast through the second one, but you can just back it up and go through the first one again if any of that didn't make sense. I do have a video specifically about how to do this hinge binding. Um, it's not my hinge binding. I just uh, made a short video um, just to kind of uh, to show how to do it. And um, I can link that in the description below if you'd like to see it in one inch scale because I did a really big one just to kind of show how it works. Now you can see we have our two pages that are the same. I have my front cover, flat spine, and then my three pages. And then we have a half inch tab over here. And then the same thing here, my three pages, half inch. We're just gonna glue one of these on top of the other. It doesn't matter which at this point. So I am just going to glue this one tab. And kind of line it up. I'm actually gonna kind of stand up to make sure that it's straightish as much as possible. But you can really push that against this other hinge here and, and get a pretty straight uh, alignment. And so, let's see here. I did mention in the flip through of this album that I didn't miter these corners. And if you notice, uh, if I shove this <laughs> into the camera, you can see where about a half inch out, you can see the little tabs that, that aren't really um, even. So that bothers me just a little bit. I want to make sure that I note that this, this part may seem extra, but it really does give a little more finished look if, um, to, to your book when it's done. Um, it's not it's not absolutely necessary. Obviously you can still make a book uh, not doing this part, but all you do is kind of miter these corners. And by miter, I mean, you're just gonna take off maybe a half an inch from about a half an inch down 
up into where this is glued. The only thing that you have to worry about when you do this mitering is that you don't cut so far in that it cuts a notch out in this area. So, um, and, and they don't need to be totally uniform. It might be easiest if we start from the outside and go in, because then we can just lean our scissors here. They don't have to be uniform because they're gonna be covered up by our pages. But getting rid of just some of that bulk really helps that have that finished kind of look when we're done um, covering the album. So you want to do this on both sides. Okay, front cover, six page hinges, and a back cover. So now we're gonna work on our pages. Set this aside here. Remember that at the very beginning, um, I said that this is, this book takes um, eight pages for the base all cut to six by 11. We used two here, so we have six left. These are our pages. So, we're just gonna put them in our scoreboard and we're going to score them in half. So they're 11 inches, that means we're gonna score at five and a half for each one. Okay, now our pages are ready to go. I don't know if anyone else noticed that I had seven, but um, I stopped at six when I was folding. And we are simply going We are simply going to um, glue the front and back of the page to the hinge. And you want to have it even at the bottom, well the top and the bottom, but what I find is that if you lean the page right into the spine and just lift it up. You can kind of get it even. I also sometimes, um, depending on the weight of the paper that I'm using and how the hinges are, I will sometimes glue one part. I'm gonna glue one part of the hinge first, one side. Line it up. Hold that down, lean it against the table there just for a second, and then glue the other part. So this particular album in the finished product, I ended up doing side slide pockets. So it wasn't a complete afterthought, but I kind of designed this so that um, when I glued the pages down at first, when I started covering some of the pages with the designer series paper and seeing what I had left over and all of those things, um, I decided um, that when I, when I first glued the pages together or glued the pages in, I wanted to keep the middle of the page empty. So I'm not putting any glue in this area. Um, and that's for two purposes. One is um, 
you might want a, a top loading pocket. The second is you might want a side loading pocket. So I went ahead and glued and just made sure that the tab is glued in well into the page and that the page is even itself. And then I just left it. So you can easily go in. Oops, I don't have enough glue at the very end here, I think is the problem. So you want to be sure that you're pushing the air out of your page as you're gluing it down. You can also come back in and re-burnish if you need to, but now we have options for, um, for other elements in this book as we're building it. Um, you know, if you want to do exactly um, what I did in this book, then you could just figure that you have two pages that are open on the side and you can slice them the other way. But I'm just gonna show you how I did it. This is not folded very even. My score line wasn't very even. But that's okay. Mind it where it needs to go. So I'm going to glue the rest of these pages in the exact same way. I'm going to put the true time of this video, like the true amount of time it takes me to create this book, in the title, just based on the, the video length itself from the beginning of the book, um, the, the book construction. But otherwise, um, I'm just going to speed over this part right here because it's the exact same thing as the first one. So now that we put all our pages in, we're just going to burnish the spine as well. You know, when you lay two pieces of paper up against the spine hinge, the hinge spine hinge spine piece, <laughs> sometimes they're going to overlap the fold a little bit. So this is the time where you have full control and don't have to worry about smashing anything or, you know, ruining any part of your book that's already completed. You want to go ahead and do that. And now your book with this type of spine should just lay flat. Everyone should open flat and lay flat. Yep. Yep. And this one as well, also flat. So now the front and back covers and all of our pages are in place. You see we have about a half an inch here. Um, now the pages look a little wonky and the spine doesn't look stable because they're really not at this point. They're not until you add a piece across here. And if you watched the flip through, this is where I said um, 
I would change this a little bit and I would take a piece of cardstock that is the same height, so six inches, and almost the same width. So these are half inch score lines, so that's three inches. So I think that I would go ahead and create a piece of whatever color cardstock you're using, the same as your binding. I'm sorry, it's three and a half. <laughs> One of them was folded under. Um, so I would do a piece that is six by three and a quarter in whatever color you're using um, for your front, back, cover, and pages. So let me do that. So here it is. And it doesn't have to be too tricky, but it can be because you've got some bulk underneath. So what I did when I put this particular piece of designer series paper down is I went ahead and I glued it just down one side and got the angle right. So for this, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pick a side and make sure that I have all of my gussets showing. And I'm just going to put a thin bead of glue down one side and attach it first. And just wanting to line it up here just to make sure that I have it, have it the right size. And I do. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue. And this is another one where I probably want, you probably want to use wet glue to um, give yourself some, give yourself a little bit of time to work with, uh, to work with glue instead of tape that will just want to fold down flat really fast. So, so this again is top to bottom the size of the spine, so that's six inches. So now, and it's also uh, three and a quarter. So there will be a little bit showing on the two sides. You can do a three and a half inch. I don't think it's necessarily exactly three and a half inches um, across all of the gussets here. Um, so I would definitely measure yours just because, you know, it depends on the weight of the cardstock and how crisp your lines are and how accurate your scoring is and all that sort of thing, how thick your bone folder is, so, um, or your scoring tool. So you can do it the full size, but now here is where I'm just going to do kind of an assembly line where I'm just going to put another line of glue. I'm going to lay down that next gusset and keep going. So you see how instead of trying to hold it up and do the spine when the spine is in the air and all the pages are wobbly, I'm just using my work surface to my advantage. Um, you might be tempted to just glue one side and then glue the other side and call it good, but we definitely want this to cover up um, all of that movement of the spine and, uh, and support it. So it's also the support that makes your book um, stable as you are building it and as people are um, Filling it with photos and memories and journaling things. Oops. Next. Yeah, these last two I'll probably just do all at once. Just make sure I get a good bead of glue around the one side. And I do want to burnish them both separately, so still working my way across the book. That way we've kind of pushed the air out and hopefully made it stable. 
could probably stand mostly on its own now. Yeah. Of course, um, again, I'm using just this 80 pound stock because that's, uh, I have a lot of it in my stash, but I do definitely like the look of this. And we'll cover this with designer series paper. I imagine you don't have to, but that will take away, um, you know, from, from these seams. But I like that a lot better. It looks like a much more finished product than seeing the gussets here. I'm not getting rid of this. I still like it. It's still good. But that is just one thing that I realized at the end of, like after I put it all together. And you can see here that these, these pieces, the very beginning of our spine, or I'm sorry, the very beginning of our page pieces aren't as bulky. They're pretty bulky here. They're pretty bulky here, and, and the designer series paper starts about an eighth of an inch down. So all of that is the, the workings, is the, um, is the base of the book. So cutting them down here uh, really takes some of that bulk out and makes it cleaner at the top. Now let me talk about these, these uh, pockets. Um, as I constructed this book, which was my kind of prototype, I knew that I might want some elements that would need to go underneath or in the middle of the page, that could go in the middle of the page. For example, if you want a piece that is here that flips up, now is a great time to do that. You can put, you can make a little hinge just like, you know, this or, you know, actually the right size and do it this way. You can also figure that out before you glue your pages in and then it can be much cleaner and you can get a, a piece in that is, is just the exact size of the book. I didn't end up doing that, um, and as I moved through, I realized that uh, for whatever reason, instead of doing top loading pockets, I wanted uh, side, a couple slide, side loading pockets. So, but I didn't do that for every one, of course. What I did is on some of the pages, I just went through and like half of the book was done at this point. Half of the book had, uh, had paper, um, had like designer paper and things going on and some interactive elements. And I just glued that top piece and then went and glued the bottom piece to close up. I think, um, there are six. So I think I did this for four of the pages and that's all I did. It's still, there's still no glue in here, um, which I don't think matters, but where I did have these guys and I said, no, 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 I want some mats that actually slide all the way out. I just cheated is I, I went ahead and I glued the top and the bottom again, but then I used a longer pair of scissors. So not your cutter bees. For this you want the longest pair of scissors that you have because you want to kind of set your scissor and not um, and not have to like move it a bunch of times. When you're cutting and trying to achieve straight lines, the fewer times that you open and reset your your scissors, the uh, the more luck you'll have with it, it being straight. So all I did was I came through this way and you don't even have to start at the bottom if you don't want to. You could do it, you know, a little bit in, but it helped for me to, um, to flip it over and just do whoop, like the slightest Well, that's not a very good example, but you can also do you can also do it with your um, if you do it at this stage, you definitely can do it in your paper trimmer because it's just two pieces of paper. There's the tiniest bit of glue there, but but that's what I did, and so 
At the end, I decided, okay, four of these I'm going to close, two of them I'm going to close but open them on the sides, and because we left it open in the middle, I can get something that slides all the way back there. Um, as, a, as someone who kind of does some of the elements on the fly when I make albums, um, that kind of gave me a little more, uh, I don't want to say wiggle room, it, it gave me a little more freedom to know that I wouldn't have to go remat a page. And when I do a, a top flap, something that opens this way, a lot of times I will glue it down before I glue the designer series paper in. That way I can get that little hinge back behind there. That's how you do um, these accordions as well, is that this is one piece of paper. So this is three and a quarter, three and a half, three and three quarters. Wait, that was not right. This is three and a quarter, six and a half, nine and three quarters, and whatever the end piece is, so about this much, I went ahead and glued that down um, after I scored it. And that is just underneath this piece of designer series paper. So now is the time, now that you have your book um, base completed and this is the basic of the base right there's still a lot that's gonna go on I have you know 24 pieces of paper to put in here and some tags and some elements and some rosettes this is the time where you want to step back and think about what you want to put where you don't have to know all of this right now but it makes it a lot easier if you take a pencil or a pen. I'm taking a pen. Um, when you use a pen, you just want to make sure you don't write in your margins, that you write somewhere where you know it's going to be covered up. And that's when I do things like write, okay, I know I want to, uh, if I want a ribbon closure, I'll write ribbon here so that before I laid this paper, lay a piece of paper down with glue on it, I, I remember, oh, I need the ribbon first, whether that's going to go all the way around or not. Or if you know that you want to put some sort of closure or you want to add another, uh, add a magnet um, and have it magnet at the front, then you would write magnet here or, or whatever helps you remember. A lot of times I'll just put an asterisk with, you know, whatever kind of uh, marker that I'm using or pen just so I stop and think, okay, what goes here? That's um, what you want to do. Uh, kind of go through, think, okay, I'm going to have a top loading pocket here. So maybe I'll put top pocket here and I'll remember to cut my notch before I put, um, before I put the, the paper on it. If, if you want notches for, for where your tags or pockets are. Um, you might stop and think, okay, I'm going to put a bottom pocket here. And the reason that I want to remember that is because instead of covering the entire paper with a five and three quarter by five and three quarter piece of cardstock, I want to cover, you know, three inches of it with the designer cardstock and then put my pocket in out of blue and then put the rest as the designer cardstock, the designer series paper. Um, just little things like that help and kind of save um, some space. And the other thing that I tried now to do is remember when I'm going to do something that's floating because I really like to get these floating hinges underneath the designer paper. You can do a floating hinge um, you can do a, a floating uh, accordion or a floating pocket um, at any time but if you already have your main piece of designer paper here a lot of times you might not want to have to put another piece over it or figure out how you're going to cover the seam and that sort of thing so I try to know ahead of time if I'm going to do something that's floating 
and I'm gonna you know I'll just put floater here and sometimes that's just like I want to consider putting something floating here um, but I don't know what it is yet I don't know if it is a, a flap or if it's a pocket or if it's a an accordion so um, I'll just write a little note and that way before I put a piece of designer paper down or I finish this page I'm gonna think about do I want to go ahead and put that together now the reason that I don't do it um, right away and you really could you could um, score and fold your piece of cardstock and glue it in here and then at the end if you don't have enough cut aparts you could you know use your exacto blade or however you want to and and just cut the piece out but a lot of times i'll wait to see how many cut aparts i have left to put the to put the paper in um to to decide that i'm actually going to do a floating whatever um, a lot of like i said the mats that i have a lot of the elements that i do really kind of depend on how much paper I want to use and how much paper I have and I like to use the cut aparts as cut aparts when I can just because it really kind of ties everything together and it gives it that same look um, so here I I knew that I was going to put something like this in and uh, and so I was able to to do the, the cut fold and then glue it in before I put this sheet of designer paper on top of it. And, and I'm saying designer paper, I don't know if you guys can even tell or if, you know, if it shows up that there are lines here, but that there are lines across this paper. So that's some of the tips about when I do a book construction. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, the time um, uh, that I say in the in the title will be the time that it took me throughout the video from from uh, scoring the paper to getting to this spine um, it'll be that amount of time even if I sped it up a little bit if you're new to these kind of bindings and it of course is going to take a little longer but um, if you have any questions or comments uh, please put them in the comments I would love to know if you are thinking about making this album or if you have questions about the designer construction. Thanks for joining me for another video. I really appreciate your support. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, safety first.